So this, in my opinion, is the best export settings to use on Shotcut for your videos. Now before we get started, I do want to say that these settings should work for YouTube or anywhere else that you're trying to upload your videos to. So here we have a pre-edited video, nothing too crazy, and the last step is to export it. First, you want to click on either the export icon that you can find here in the top ribbon or come down here to the export tab in the media center. You should then be presented with a window like this where on one side you're going to find presets. Now these are predetermined export settings that are applied to your video depending on what your project is. Now if you're exporting a normal video, my recommendation is to use the H.264 high profile, which is the standard one that you will hear a lot about. Or you can scroll down to the lossless section and choose the H.264 version, either one is good. Another option for you if for some reason you're having trouble with your video using the H.264 preset is to use the YouTube preset. Now this will add extra compression to your video, kind of what YouTube does already when you upload a video, but in this case you will have a smaller file size and a slight decrease in quality but nothing too much. But that is an option for you to use. And I say this because in the old export video that I made, a lot of you had problems with this so this is a second solution. But for now, we're going to be using the H.264 high profile, which is basically the same settings that we would use with the YouTube preset. So if one works for you and the other one doesn't, you can use these same settings. So this is the startup window right here. And the first thing we want to do is secure that we're exporting everything from the timeline. This will include all the assets in your timeline that we're going to be exporting. You also have this option to use hardware encoding, which is basically using your GPU for extra support in order to boost exporting times. All you have to do is just select it on and you can use the configure button to choose which setting you want. But for now, we're just going to leave that disabled. The next thing we're going to do is go to the advanced selection. From here, you can see the same thing. We're going to export from the timeline and disable any hardware encoder. The format is really important. You want to leave it at MP4, which is at default. Now the resolution is 1920 by 1080. The aspect ratio is 16 by 9 and the frames per second or FPS is at 60. Now all of these settings match the project settings that I have for this edit, which are settings that you set every time you start a new project in Shotcut. And you guys can of course select the drop down menu so you can select different settings. Now the scan mode we want to leave it at progressive, just trust me on this one, I don't really have time to explain why. The main difference between progressive and interlaced is that interlaced is an older form of a scan mode which is not as efficient as this progressive scan mode so we're just going to leave it at that. And then everything else that you see in this first video tab page, we're just going to leave it at default. Now for some reason if you mess up one of the settings and you don't know what the original setting was, you can always click on the reset button and it'll just reset all the settings for you. But for the most part I always leave it at default, but for now I'm just going to go through every single one of them and explain them to you. The next tab that we're going to go to is the codec tab. We're just going to leave the codec and rate control at default and the quality is where we can make our adjustments. Now Shotcut will always have this at 55, however the most recommended setting to leave the quality at is at 85 minimum all the way to 100%. But like always, the higher the quality percentage is, the larger file size you will have when you export for video. But for today's video, I'm just going to leave it at the recommended minimum which is at 85%. And from here, we have the number of frames, B frames and codec threads. You just want to leave that at default. And most importantly, make sure the disable video is not selected. If you're exporting a video, you definitely want to be careful with the setting because that will disable the whole video once you export. Now going to the audio tab. Now this is basically the simplest one. All you have to do is just leave everything at default because it will just match to your project settings like before. The channels, we're going to leave at 2 stereo, sample rate 48,000, codec, AAC, and everything else is good to go. Also make sure that you don't have the disable audio setting selected because if you're exporting a video with audio, it won't export. So make sure you have those deselected. The last tab is the other tab. Now you don't really have to worry anything about that. And we can go back to the starter video tab. Once you feel good about all your settings and you have them just the way you like it, the last thing to do is just export the file by hitting that button. And then your documents folder should appear, giving you the option to save it to a particular folder, which I do recommend, and name the video if you haven't named the project yet. 
So I'm just going to select this folder and this is the name of the video and the project. So we're just going to click save and I'm good to go. And as you can see, a new jobs window has appeared. Now I put mine to appear right above my preview window, but it may appear at a different location for you guys. Just know that the jobs window will display all the exported projects that are either finished or in process of exporting. So as you can see, this is how it looks like when your video is done rendering. You can see a little check mark on the side, followed by the name of the video and where it's saved. And underneath the jobs window, we can use a pause button in order to pause the exporting process. And you can also use this little menu settings to remove any finished exported jobs. But apart from exporting a normal video in Shotcut, I also do want to go over some other presets that you guys can use to export different types of media when you're working on Shotcut. The first one I want to cover is how to export for a GIF animation. Now from here, it's pretty simple. You just choose the GIF animation preset. And if you go to the advanced tab, you can see that the format will be exported as a GIF. And you can leave every single one of these settings as default because it's just going to export a GIF. Not a lot of frames to go by. It's going to disable the audio and it's just going to give you the default settings for you to use when trying to export a GIF. And I actually have a video on how to make a GIF in Shotcut and more detailed settings when you're exporting it as well, just in case you want to check it out. The second preset I want to show you is when you're trying to export any elements with a transparent background. In this case, I'm using a lower third as an example. Now this setting does depend if you do have access to QuickTime on your computer, but if you do, all you have to do is just come to the alpha section of the presets and choose QuickTime animation. And it will export your video clips or elements with a transparent background and it will have a MOV format, which most of you should be familiar with when exporting any overlay elements. You can leave everything else default and just hit export file and you should be good to go. So this preset comes in handy when you're just trying to export audio from a certain video that you're editing, or if you're just editing audio on Shotcut, this is the best preset to use, which is just the wave preset underneath the audio section of the presets. As you can see, if we go to the advanced tab, you can leave everything to default. If you go to the codec tab, you can see that it's checked disabled video since we're just exporting the audio. And all of these settings, again, you can leave it default and it's going to give you the best audio quality when exporting with this WAVE preset, which will also give you a WAVE format file. Now the last preset that I want to share with you comes in handy when you're trying to export a still or in this case like a screenshot image of a certain frame in your video. Now you want to scroll all the way down to the stills section of the presets and choose PNG. Now this preset will give you the best quality when you're trying to export any stills and you can go over it like always each settings tab you can leave the video codec audio and format all to default you don't have to worry about it. You will get the best settings when using the PNG format when you're trying to export stills. And the process is basically the same for any other. Check the settings, leave it default if you're comfortable with it, and just select export file, and all the files should be saved into the folder of your choosing. Now these are all the presets that I wanted to share with you, just because I feel that they're the most common used ones when working on different projects in Shotcut. I know that there's so many other presets and it's easy to get overwhelmed, but this is just a quick breakdown of the most common presets that you guys can use when working on your projects. Doesn't matter if it's a video, a GIF, just audio, or an overlay element, and even some still frames. So hopefully I covered the most common and basic presets for you guys to use. Real quick shout out to Artlist and their copyright free music service that you can use for your own videos. Get two extra free months when you subscribe through the link in the description. But like always, if you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.